councillors, chief officers, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding to receive the worshipful, the Mayor of Knowsley, Councillor Frank Walsh. Thank you, colleagues. Please be seated. <coughs> colleagues, welcome to this meeting and welcome to everyone in the public gallery. Can I remind everyone that all mobile phones should be turned to silent for the duration of this meeting and can I ask all members to ensure that they use the microphones. Please note that as usual, the council will be filming and recording this meeting. This will include people sitting in the public gallery. A copy of the film will be uploaded to the Nosley Council YouTube site in due course following this meeting. I also wish to refer everyone to the other paper that is being placed in front of them and which is on each seat in the public gallery. Colleagues, before we move to the first item of business, I would like to take this opportunity to remember former councillor Bob Maguire, who recently passed away. Bob served on the council for 28 years and was mayor of Knowsley in the year 2000 to 2001. More recently, in January 2017, Bob was appointed as an honorary alderman and I know I speak for many here when I say that he will be sorely missed. Also colleagues, I would like to highlight that Holocaust Memorial Day will be this Saturday the 27th of January. This is an international day of remembrance in relation to the Holocaust and the subsequent genocides. <coughs> Colleagues, once again, can I ask you all to join me in a minute's silence as a sign of respect for our former colleague Bob and also to express support for Holocaust Memorial Day. Thank you, colleagues. <coughs> Item number one. Are that agreed? Yes. Item number two. Declarations of interest. <coughs> Item number three, mail communications. Colleagues, can you please note these engagements that have been carried out? Item 3B, recognition of community achievements. Colleagues, I would like to take this opportunity to recognise the achievement of Karma Martial Arts Group and welcome the group's representatives who are here this evening in the chamber. This is a family-run group based at Mosscroft Community Centre, which is set up as a 
community interest group, a kind of social enterprise. The group carry out a wide range of fundraising activities such as Halloween, Christmas and Easter parties, race nights, barbecues and raffles. The local pensioners also do a spot the ball at bingo to help raise money for the fighters going to the championships. Overall, £3,000 was raised towards the cost of the trip to the Martial Arts World Championships in Dublin last October through the efforts of the fighters, the parents from the club and the local community. Their efforts were rewarded and I'm pleased to report that the two coaches and 10 fighters returned with 13 gold medals, five silver medals, five bronze medals and one fourth place between them. Colleagues, I am sure you will agree that this was a remarkable achievement and the group have done wonder a wonderful job in representing Nosley both locally and on the world stage. I therefore ask you to join me in congratulating the representatives here this evening in the usual way. Can I now ask the representative to come forward so that I can present you with the certificate in recognition of your contribution. Colleagues, moving on to item 3C, an announcement. Councillor Joan Lilly, I believe you have an announcement that you'd like to make. Thank you, Mr May. Colleagues, I'm really pleased to inform you that on Friday the Council received the excellent news that a bid put into the Strategic School Improvement Fund had been successful. The success of the bid mean that almost three quarters of a million pounds, which is 744,000 to be exact, of extra funding will be put into education in those over the next four terms. This is a signif significant achievement for the Council given that bids to this fund nationally will for the amount of between 100,000 and half a million. The additional funding secured will mean an accelerating improvement in Nosley Pathways to Success programme can now be implemented with immediate effect. This programme will play a key role in accelerating improvement in literacy in transition between our local primary and secondary schools and it will help to put more of our young people onto the pathway 
to GCSE success in future years. The programme will have a real focus on improving teaching quality through the use of powerful forms of professional development and capacity given hubs made up of schools with proven track records. Support will also be provided by an additional and new team of highly experienced pathway advisors with strong track <coughs> records of success in challenging schools. So we've got 26 primary and four secondary schools in Nosley who are going to benefit from this extra support and they were selected on a government criteria basis to out of the fund. The programme has been purposely designed by our Education Commission working alongside council staff and school leaders and it builds upon the work that the Commission have been doing in Nosley since coming together in October 2016. The amount of funding secured is a positive <coughs> endorsement of the work now being done in this area in Nosley and the Commission will continue to play a key leadership role in the implementation of this programme <coughs> to help increase the impact it has on the lives of our young people and I do have a list of the 30 schools which I'll forward to members. Thank you Mr Mayor. Thank you Councillor Lilly. Colleagues, moving on to item number four, public question time. <coughs> One valid public question has been received. Can I invite Mr. Gittins to ask his question, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> right, my question is about parks and public green spaces. Compared to 1985, how much public green space accessible to residents without charge for amenity, leisure and recreational purposes <coughs> does the council expect to have left relative to per head population in the borough in the year 2028? Thank you Mr Gittins. <coughs> Councillor Moorhead would you like to respond to Mr Gittins' question? <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Gittins, for your question, and also for your correspondence that you recently exchanged. I think it's really important that our residents who are passionate about our green spaces seek clarification about the amount of publicly accessible green spaces we have, free of charge, compared to what we will what will be available in 2028. Unfortunately, our records uh, don't go back uh, as far as 1985, as the data pre 2011 when we undertook our first green space order for the local plan was used with different definitions of green space which makes like for like comparisons impossible. However, I can advise that in 2011, Nosley had a population of circa 145,900 residents who had free charge, charge access to 888 hectares of public green space land. This equates to 60 square metres per head of population, roughly the size of a static caravan. By 2028, those who will have a population circa 150,000 people, who will have 834 hectares or 50 square metres per head of population to enjoy free of charge. This is, after, this is after the surrender of the 17 parks and the housing and employment land developments that will have taken place by then. This also represents 384 hectares more than the 450 hectares that our local plan requires Nosley to have. Furthermore, this represents an overall loss of just four square metres per head of population by 2020. Sorry, by 2028. So our residents can be assured that our proposals alongside our growth ambitions to create more jobs, better housing, and to enjoy more economic growth across the border, we will still ensure that our families will still have plenty of high quality, well-maintained parks and public option spaces to enjoy free of charge forever. So that answers the question. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead, if you just remain at the lectern. <laughs> Mr. Gittins, as the initiator of the um, question, would you like to ask the Leader of the Council a supplementary question? Yeah, so I've got a, a question here. 
met Mr. Gittins. Uh, Mr. Gittins, uh, um, can I, I just remind you, it must be with regards to the same question. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Has an audit been done on the effects of the loss of areas on the health and well-being of children and young people? Again, a very good question. Uh, uh, I couldn't answer that. It's a technical question. We'll have to find out. And I'll get the information to you as quickly as I can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gittins. Thank you, Mr. Council Moorhead. <coughs> Colleagues, moving on to item number five, 2018-2019 Council Tax Base and Forecast, 2017-2018 Collection Fund Balance. Councillor C. Happy to move those recommendations, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor C. Councillor Moorhead. Happy again to second them recommendations, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Colleagues, are there any questions or comments from the members of the Council? <coughs> Councillor C. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Colleagues, just to highlight a few points from this report, I'm pretty sure everyone's read it in detail and will have seen today in the press some details of the situation Liverpool <coughs> will be in. Uh, similar to us, we'll be talking about our budget, and this is the basis that we'll build our budget on for the March meeting. Uh, but some important facts for us to remember, colleagues. When we talk about <coughs> our council tax base, this is one figure that we should remember uh, associated to the, the question that was raised by Mr Gittins before. Our council tax base for the 2018 uh, financial year for band D properties will be 35,093 properties. That's an increase of nearly 1,996 properties, 2.9% increase since last year. That can only mean one thing for our borough. <coughs> new houses means new people, new residents, and also our local residents having a place to live in our borough. That's really important for all of us in this room. This also shows in the report that there will be, obviously, new housing, but it also shows that there will be an increase uh, of just over a million pounds in the amount of money that we will have in the council. That's not new money that we'll have to spend. It is money that we'll have to spend, colleagues, on making sure that we fund the key and vital services in our borough that those residents that we serve quite rightly deserve to have. I also want to make the point that there are fewer residents in our borough now having to look for our support in terms of council tax support and the scheme that we have in place. And there's a number of reasons for this, colleagues. But the one that I like to point out is the fact that now in our borough we have greater prosperity for all of our residents and therefore jobs means that those people can now afford to pay council tax and afford their own way in life. I also want to make the point that during this there will be a number of one-off investments that we as a council will make. Those investments like in previous year colleagues will be there to make sure that we can bridge the gap between government funding cuts and make sure that we can make our way to 2020 <coughs> and we'll have no government funding at all in this budget. And I would like to say that I think we do an excellent job as a local authority that's run by a Labour Council in Nosley. Thanks, colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Singh. <coughs> colleagues, is there any members of the Council that would like to ask a question? If there are no amendments, can I put the motion to the vote? All those in favour? All those against? Would anybody like to abstain? The motion is carried. <coughs> Item number six, community governance review. Councillor Moorhead. Can I move down recommendations, please, Mr. Mayor? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, members. Councillor Moorhead. May I move down Mr. Mayor? Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Moorhead. Councillor C. Happy to second those recommendations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor C. Colleagues, any questions or comments from members of the Council? 
Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> um, I've got to say I was dismayed when I had to read this report. Um, I wasn't too pleased when Knowsley Council decided it needed to do a review uh, and put £10,000 plus to this. But having read it, <coughs> what comes across to me, Mr Mayor, is that you know, one size does not fit all or certainly suit all. And that is particular, I think, when it comes to town and parish councils. And it seems to me that the report demonstrates, in a way, Nosley's unnecessary interference in town and parish council business. Um, and putting in that money town count, um, to do this review, town councils um, across the borough have also had to use uh, important resources uh, to respond uh, in the way they see fit to, to protect themselves <coughs> from, you know, possible abolition. Um, I, I looked at the report, there was 27 general responders which seem to have been highlighted and given a weight of importance beyond what I feel is necessary. Uh, yeah, I compare that with, say on page 66, you've got Prescott Town Council and Whiston Town Council with uh, Prescott with 491 written submissions in support of the Town Council um, and the status quo basically. And you've got Whiston with 341 written submissions, I think similar letters of support for that Town Council um, but we can't help but um, highlight Halewood Town Council and the example that that sets. Knowsley Town and Parish Council are quite happy to um, reduce their number of councillors from 16 to 12. Prescott wants to retain theirs at 17, but Knowsley sees fit to come to some sort of decision where they think it's fit that Prescott has 12 councillors and wants to put that forward to the, uh, the Commission. So, you know, overall, I feel it is a poor report. It does not reflect, certainly, um, the, the differences of, of our town and parish councils and their qualities across the borough. And it seems like an attempt to me to make, you know, one size fit all. And that just doesn't work in this in this borough. And I, I would have thought that the council and the people who've come to this decision really would have recognised that and done a bit more to promote um, town and parish councils. And you know, unfortunately, I will not be voting uh, for this report. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Colleagues. Are there any further questions or comments from members of the Council? Councillor Mohead, do you wish to speak? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for the, letting me in at this moment, this juncture. Uh, if we look at the principal authority, which is ourselves, we reduced our numbers down because it, we felt it needed to reflect what was going on democratically when we compare our neighbours with that. And if we done that as this authority, comparing ourselves with the rest of Merseyside, or the numbers of ward sizes, etc. The same position potentially and is being applied to what town councils are doing. So when you talk about different town councils, the electorate in Airwood Town Council is 16,000 plus. The electorate in Prescott Town Council is eight, just under 9,000. Big difference. But then when you look at the numbers of actually ward councils and the numbers of people they are actually representing, it is a bit skewed to say the least. I would urge members to support this purely in the principle is that if Airwood Town Council, with the biggest electorate of all, can get award after award after award for achieving for their local community, and it appears that Prescott Town Council, with 19 on it, does a lot of good work, does a lot of good work in that world. I was just going to talk about the meals on weed, the food stuff they do, and all the rest of it. They do an excellent job. But I believe that this should be a great to see me. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. 
Colleagues, if there are no further amendments, can I put the motion to the vote? All those in favour? All those against? <coughs> Would anybody like to abstain? The motion is carried. Colleagues, moving on to item number seven, joint authorities and combined authority. No questions have been received. <coughs> item number eight, members' question time. <coughs> Colleagues, a number of member questions have been submitted about the same matter. And as set out on the order paper, one of these questions is directed to the leader of the opposition and the rest are directed to the leader of the council. <coughs> I am therefore going to invite councillor Ian Smith to ask his question of the leader of the opposition first, and I will then take the remaining member questions together. This is in the order that they were received, as I consider this to be conducive to the effective conduct of this meeting. Can I invite Councillor Smith to ask his question for the Leader of the Opposition? Thank you, Councillor Smith. <coughs> uh, Mr Mayor, just on a point of clarification before I ask my question. Um, seeing as you're taking all the questions to the Leader of the Council together, I take it Councillors will still have the opportunity to ask a supplementary. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Smith, there you go. Um, this is to the Leader of the Opposition. Um, is there a better approach to dealing with the maintenance <coughs> of parks and green spaces following the recently badly received review? Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Cashman, would you like to respond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Smith, for the question uh, and for the opportunity to address members of this council and members of the public in the public gallery as well. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make it clear that it is not the basis of this proposal from the Independent Parks Review that we have opposed, but the shocking way that the council are trying to go about implementing it. When it comes to class, this council has none, and when it comes to consultation, the all meaning of the word is lost. If we had gone to the trouble of creating an independent review board to address this severe funding challenge, we would actually take its advice on something as crucial to delivery as the engagement of residents, town and parish councils, and indeed ward members who were kept completely in the dark. Also, if the Cabinet had agreed that it would explore potential for capital receipts from other sites outside of the remit of the Parks Review, we would actually be able to see if it was possible before sending communities into absolute turmoil by placing their treasured green spaces on a hit list. And if we were advised by an independent board to give priority to retaining sites of higher community value, we would not then place 10 sites on a list of 17 that our own assessment said had between 100,000 and 200,000 users per year. Two of these sites, over 200,000 users. So in responding to severe funding challenge, challenges, it's not just what you do, but it's the way that you do it. And this council is in the process of causing damage that can never ever be repaired in this borough and that will be the legacy of all of us on this council to leave for future generations and it is not an approach that I think any of us should be happy to support. 
My colleague's absence as well due to serious illness is not something to play political football with and evidently it wouldn't have made a difference as well as Labour members on the panel were eventually overlooked when it came to making <coughs> a decision. We should be looking more closely at the running costs of this council, more importantly the level of senior staffing. If this council disposes of eight parks that by their own assessment were receiving between 100,000 and 200,000 uses per year, at, at two, at over 200,000, that's a minimum, a minimum of 1.2 million visits per year, 100,000 visits per month, and around 23,000 visits per week. They are powerful numbers, and I urge Labour members to take note of these numbers because these are your residents. So in summary, Mr Mayor, when it comes to, the, to land, the council knows the price of everything but the value of nothing. And the real winners here are the developers and this council is clearly putting the interest of those developers above the interests of Nosley communities and local residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cashman. Councillor Cashman. Councillor Smith, as the originator of the question, would you like to ask the Leader of the Opposition a supplementary question? I don't think that needs a uh, supplementary, Mr Mayor. It was quite comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Councillor Cashman. <coughs> Moving on, can I now invite Councillor Ian Smith to ask his question for the Leader of the Council. Hi, Mr Mayor. Um, have the Council's Cabinet determined or described what the uh, proposed development would be at King George V playing field, Prescott, or any of the other named sites across the borough that have been listed for surrender? <coughs> And have they ensured political and public confidence and support for their recommendations? Thank you, Councillor Smith. <coughs> Can I invite Councillor Carl Cashman to ask both of his questions? Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> Um, if the Parks and Green Spaces proposal is supposed to allow residents groups and local people greater influence over parks, why is it that local people have been ignored by this council and precious parks destroyed? That's my first question, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, the second question is, why has this council overlooked the role of local town and parish councils when making its decision on parks and green spaces uh, in, in terms of their availability for developments? Thank you, Councillor Cashman. Councillor Moorhead, would you like to respond to them three questions? Can I point out at this point, um, Councillor Moorhead, that there were three separate questions. So on that basis, <coughs> you are allowed to reply for five minutes to each question, making a total of 15 minutes. Thanks, Thank Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Smith and Councillor uh, Cashman for both your questions. Uh, and thanks again for the opportunity to respond to um, well, very, very well worked out questions, I suppose. Uh, but here we go. Colleagues, City, the last few months have certainly been quite challenging here in Norway. Some incredible, difficult conversations have been had, and the decisions that have been made have really tested us all. I always knew that our work to identify future funding for our parks and open spaces was going to be extremely difficult. Parks are much loved community assets and here in Osley we certainly have more than our fair share of fantastic green spaces to enjoy. All maintained to a very high standard, in fact 18 of them are flying the green flag standards to prove it. But it's been clear for some time that this investment in maintenance will soon be seriously in jeopardy as the significant cuts to our funding continue to take its toll. And precisely because we are so proud of our parks and green spaces, we knew that sitting back and doing nothing wasn't an option. 
If we didn't try to find a new way to manage our parks, the money we have to fund their maintenance will simply run out by April 2019. That would mean nobody cutting the grass, maintaining play equipment, clearing the litter, pruning back the trees, bushes, and it would also mean that 39 people would have been at risk of being made redundant. Our parks would also rapidly deteriorate. I've lived in Nosley all my life and I remember, as I'm sure many of you do, a time when our parks were in places where people wanted to go or use, spend time in. I don't want to go back to that. I'm sure everyone here would like to go back to that either. So the, the review was instigated for a specific purpose, to find a way to protect our parks from future cuts. To ensure the standard we are maintaining jobs aren't lost and people can continue to use and love these special places now and into the future. But we don't have a magic wand or a pot of money that keeps replenishing itself. We had to find a new way and that's what we've done. You might not agree with outcomes or the list of sites we have been, that have been identified, but all I ask is that you are aware of the facts. The facts of the situation and the circumstances that have given us, have got, have got us to this point. There are lots of mistruths out there and suggestions that our intentions here is something it simply isn't. At Cabinet, I said this was a choice none of us wanted to make, and that is absolutely true. But when I took this job on, I knew that difficult decisions like this will be part of the role, and they are something we have to face up to. When the cuts first started to bite, there were many who thought that Nosley wouldn't survive. How could this deprive the area that relies so heavily on government funding, funding actually function with so little money? Well, we have survived, but the challenges for us continue and it's getting harder. Our funding has been cut by 45% since 2010. That's a 90 million cut in the money we have to deliver services. Per resident, that works out at £485 less to spend each year, compared to around £188 less residents in other parts of the country have to spend. There is no doubt that we have been hit the hardest here in Nosley and the challenge to continue to support our residents in this context is tougher than ever. Our, bu our budget is currently pushed to the limit. We have approximately £100 million to spend on services. That might sound like a lot of money, but quite frankly, it isn't even close to what we really need and there's very limited flexibility in how and on what we spend that money on. When you consider that 70 million of that 100 million, 70% is spent just on adult social care and children's services, which doesn't leave very much left in the pot to deliver or what the everyday services you see in your communities. First call on the remaining funding has to be prioritised for statutory services, like waste collection, highways maintenance, so that there's very little left to plough into other important services like running our libraries or maintaining our parks. And that's what's led us to this juncture. There are services that we are statutorily obliged to deliver to protect the most vulnerable, and quite rightly so, parks aren't one of them. We have to concentrate our efforts on supporting the most in need in our communities, and that comes at a cost, a significant but the truth is, our dwindling budget is barely covering them statutory services that we currently provide. We are overspending in adult social care and children's social care year on year as demand in those services increases and the government fails to fund these adequately. We need our communities, therefore, the, sorry, the needs in our communities are therefore greater than the budget we currently have. But we have to provide the support above all else. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, social works from those were involved in a case where two young children were identified as being at risk of harm within their family situation. We had to take action to take those children into our care 
and to ensure their safety. This in, particular, in this particular case, the children involved have complex health and developmental needs that require specific support that is something that we have to provide for them. In this case alone, it costs £6,000 to care for those children. That's £300,000 a year, and that's just for one family we're supporting. We, are absolutely, we, have, we absolutely have to be there for the family and for others just like them. <coughs> that is money we absolutely have to spend on those, and these are the people we have to prioritise. Then you look at the very, very many vulnerable adults in Nosy that need our support. It costs around about £5,000 a week to place an adult just discharged from hospital in support of living accommodation. 4,000 a week for 24 hour home care support for an adult with learning disabilities and complex needs. 2,000 pound a week to pay for an individual living in a mental health residential care home. There's just a few examples what we have to deliver statutorily. 70% of our budget is spent on that. The cost is high and the need is great. It's something we absolutely have to do for our money is running out. So as you can see, there are lots of priorities that unfortunately sit way ahead of parks and green spaces on the list of things that we must and have to do. But despite that, we didn't want to give up on our parks or our playing fields. By making the decision we did at Cabinet two weeks ago, we are protecting 144, 90% of our park and green spaces forever. This will be achieved through the surrender of 17, 10% of them over the next 15 years. It's not a decision we're making tomorrow, it's a 15 year project. And just to be clear, when they are sold, we will hand over the money over to a charitable trust, a totally separate, publicly owned company, to the council who will manage that fund. That money will be invested and never be spent by this council. But it will generate the annual income, enough interest to accumulate, accumulate that will improve our parks and sustain our parks forever. We as a council won't make any profit from this transaction and we won't touch a penny of the money that is generated. It's guaranteed. This is money we are setting aside for the benefit of each and every resident of the borough. So that you, your children and your children's children will have high quality of, of parks, safe and beautiful parks, that you will be able to, and your family will be able to, enjoy forever. We know that some residents aren't happy with the decisions that we have made, and there are numerous claims out there that there is some other way of protecting our parks. I think it's just there, an idea. Sadly though, the simple truth is that the independent review was a comprehensive one. The board was tired of looking at all possible options and unanimously concluded that this was the only solution to ensure a safe future for parks here. That's why the board undertook such a thorough piece of work and why, oh, no. why they engaged with rubbish. friends of park groups and parish and town councils from the outset. So contrary to Councillor Cosman's view and his question this evening, the council did not overlook the role of town and parish councils or ignore local people. Friends of Parks were on, were, on, were on the review board. Indeed, I'll just mention it again, five out of the 20 places on the Parks Review Board were taken up by parish and town councillors. Most interestingly of all, our very own Liberal Democrat colleagues, Councillor Cashman and Councillor Smith, were invited to take place on the board, which they accepted. And Carl's, Councillor Cashman has clearly indicated that unfortunately Councillor Smith was and did have a prolonged illness at the time and couldn't take part. But Councillor Cashman had ample opportunity to input into this process, but I suppose he must have been busy doing some important work somewhere else. What we do know, what we do know is that our Liberal Democratic colleagues unanimously agreed that there was a need to find a, a new way of managing our park. We supported the resolution last January. Yeah. Yeah. We do need to find a new way of managing our park. Order. Order. Order.
Um, Councillor Cashman, will you allow the leader to complete his speech? You will have an opportunity at supplementary question time to ask a question. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Why they did not take up their place on the board and contribute their ideas to shape the work is something they will have to try and justify in the future. All we know is that they did not take part and they have contributed absolutely nothing to this process. They chose to ignore something they knew was happening and now they're sharing their upset and disappointment after the fact. That says a lot to me and I think it says a lot to other colleagues in this room as well. Surely as representatives to our local community, it is our role as elected members to step up for this kind of involvement. No matter how difficult and try to be part of the solution. If our communities don't all support the outcomes, then at least we can actually say to them, we've tried to shape something different, contributed to an alternative idea, or most of all, stood up for what we actually believe in. I think I've clearly mentioned the statutory requirements that I believe we've got to support as a council. That's why I was something baffled, I was baffled, to hear the questions when I first seen them before Christmas, and to this meeting this evening, and indeed to each other, specifically about whether there is a better approach. We've got the usual approach from our opposition members. Let's pick on the senior staff, let's cut all their wages and all the rest of it. And the, the most interesting part is we're using our receipts for some, something else. Well, let me just go through a few things. We, since we reduced this the senior managing team down to what the size is now and saved over three million pounds to do that, we have actually delivered a better tools and services, that's it, actually good now. We've actually improved our adult, adult social services to better where it is at this stage. The growth in this bullet and the GVA in this bullet is far exceeds the whole national uh, growth output at this moment in time. The numbers of jobs we create is fantastic, over a thousand plus <coughs> for the size of our bullet. Another six to seven million pounds being levered into Pres the Prescott incident, incidentally. Uh, through the city region, through the SIF fund, that will do redo up Eccleston Street and Prescott Town, uh, uh, by, uh, I get it right here, railway station. <laughs> so from the chief exec to Debbie who cleans my office, I think every one of them deserve a round of applause for what they actually do for this authority. You've had every opportunity to find that better solution. I don't think you've brought any of that forward this afternoon or tonight. To work with us to shape that work. You declined the opportunity and have con contributed nothing to this process. So Councillor Cashman and Councillor Smith, I would say decisions are easy to criticise, but they're very, very difficult to make. And when you fail to engage and step up, I'm glad to say that other people did. Other people took the time to share their views with us, to shape ideas and positively contribute. And for that, I thank them. Right at the beginning, I spoke to Mr. Gettings, and he shared some great ideas with me. Don't know whether they're feasible, but we'll look at them and he'll get a full response about that. We have also had genuine questions and queries from members of the public expressing their concerns or asking more for more and more information. And I welcome that. We've set up a, a page on our website to hopefully answer all of them. So all the frequently asked questions are being sorted out, and I'm going through emails as and when I get them, which incidentally is not very many. Taking the time to understand our position is all that we can ask of the public. The council has made it possible, made this position clear on proposed developments on the 17 sites at Cabinet during the scrutiny calling process and again at Cabinet earlier this morning. Housing developments will take place on proposed sites. So yes, we have political support and confidence for those recommendations. That said, I have had many conversations over the last couple of weeks with people from Halewood who want affordable rented accommodation on at least one of them sites in Halewood. Family friends, and yes I do have some friends in Prescott, believe it or not, have asked could Prescott Town Council potentially purchase Brownfield site and not build on it. That's an option for the Town Council and again all ideas should and will be explored. The recommendation from the Parks Review Board were informed by a sophisticated and statistically, statistically sound and robust public consultation <laughs> with evidence that 60% of 2,500 respondents 
of our body supports them. Again, the public position is clear on that. <coughs> so not only did the Lib Lib Democrats fail their local community mm -hmm. by not participating in this group, so I don't think I'll be taking any, any, any lessons whatsoever <coughs> from opportunists like yourselves. Yeah. Just, I like your, like your, and like you in identifying long-term strategic solutions that is not from yet, and they will not protect 144 parks forever. So whilst we do recognise that some people are concerned or even angry, we also know that many people are taking the time to understand our position and understand the rationale behind our approach. This week I've written a blog on this subject which also addresses some of the concerns that have been raised to me in the last few weeks and I urge you all to read that. <coughs> to put it very simply, I firmly believe this is our best possible chance to safeguard our parks from potentially irreversible decline. If you value your local space to play, walk, socialise or just enjoy the great outdoors. I hope you can understand that this proposal is designed to protect 144 parks, not take them away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Councillor Smith, in response to your initial question, do you wish to ask the Leader of the Council a supplementary question? After which, Councillor Cashman, you can then ask your two supplementary <coughs> questions, if you so wish. Councillor Smith? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Supplementary question is that at the Cabinet meeting on the 9th of January, which you referred to, um, <laughs> is in response to the call-in. It states the Cabinet does recognise that should a Town Council decide not to proceed with this Council's proposals, that all future capital liabilities for the site will pass to the Town Parish Council. In, view, in light of that, could the Leader tell us exactly what he means by capital liabilities, and will this include, as one of his friends in Prescott has alluded, to uh, include the transfer of ownership of the, uh, of the land to the said town or parish council as the parks um, and green spaces in your reply are clearly not your priority. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Moorhead, would you like to respond to Councillor Smith? Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Smith. And thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, a technical question I will respond in writing. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Councillor Cashman, would you like to ask your two supplementary questions, if you so wish? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just one uh, supplementary question. I think the Leader will be happy to know. And I'll just uh, remind him to be mindful of the fact that he's on public record when answering this as well. Uh, so when making such crucial de crucial decisions... Oh, it's being filmed, so... Uh, when making such crucial decisions for the order, is it now usual practice to table reports and papers that have not been in the public domain as cabinet rules require and as you did with the 17 sites is this really the level of transparency and governance you offer the people of Knowsley? And again a very very technical question Thank you Councillor Cashman, thank you Councillor Moorhead Colleagues, moving on to item nine, notice of motion. Number one, anti-Semitism, adoption of definition. Councillor Moorhead, I believe you have a motion, you wish to counsel to consider? Can I, can I move that mo motion as it's as in the papers, Mr Mayor? Thank you, Councillor Moorhead. Councillor Murphy? I duly second that motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Okay. Are there any members who wish to speak on this motion? All those in favour? All those against? Would anybody like to abstain? The motion is carried. And finally, colleagues, moving on to item number 10. Any other items? <coughs> Seeing as there are no further items of an urgent nature, can I thank you all for your attendance here this evening?
I now declare the meeting closed and I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you. Please be upstanding for the Mayor.